Today, we will go over the various jettison functions of the Hornet, starting with the emergency release button on the left of the instrument panel. This will dump all your pylon stores and the center line, leaving you with only your fuselage and wingtip missiles. Perfect for use as a panic button when suddenly attacked by SAMs, or forced into an engagement with hostile aircraft, and you need that extra weight gone to focus on survival. Next up we have our planned stores jettison option, specifically the selective jettison button. This allows you to choose which stores and how you wish to jettison them. There are five push buttons, center, left inner, right inner, left outer and right outer, used for pylon selection. In addition to that, we have the ejection mode as chosen by rotating the selective jettison button. When you push the red jettison button, it'll jettison the selected stores in the selected method. The safe position will disable the jettison system. On the left we have the left fuselage missile, and then on the right we have the right fuselage missile. When selected, these allow you to drop the AIM-120 or AIM-7 missiles that you have mounted on the sides of your fuselage by pushing the center jettison button. Next we have our rack, launcher and stores options. These both serve similar functions. The rack selection will drop your stores on your selected pylon along with their connecting rack, and stores will eject the bombs or missiles you have without dropping the rack that they are attached to. Or at least that's what should happen, at the moment it appears incomplete. As a result I recommend you only using the rack selection on the selective jettison as the stores jettison sometimes won't jettison your stores, or it'll drop the whole rack anyway. You can see what's on your pylons by going to the stores page on the tactical menu, or you can just look out your window. So turn your master arm on, select the stores you wish to jettison via the push buttons, rotate the knob to rack and push the jettison button to drop one store at a time, or hold the button to drop them all at once. If for whatever reason your stores do not jettison, switch the knob to the other position, rack or stores, and try again. Don't forget to return the selective jettison to safe when you are done. This is your primary method of jettisoning equipment, as such as fuel tanks or hung stores. Behind the stick we have the ECM jettison push button. This will drop all your countermeasures very rapidly, only used for emergencies where the countermeasure bays are at risk of combustion, for example if you're going to make a belly landing or a fire. The countermeasure bays themselves are located on the underside of the engine intakes. You can jettison fuel via the fuel dump switch by the throttle. This will start fuel venting from the tops of the horizontal stabilizers. It will automatically disengage at 2,800 pounds of fuel, or when you reach your bingo state, set by the arrows beneath your fuel level. Although not presently simulated, caution should be exercised when using the fuel dump switch so as to not ignite the fuel, by performing high AOA maneuvering and afterburner usage. Finally, we have the canopy jettison handle, located by the left canopy bow. It has a thumb lock on the top, and is actuated by pulling. Left click on the thumb lock, then on the handle itself. This will release the canopy from the aircraft. You would use this in situations where ejecting is not safe, to allow easier escape from the aircraft. For example, if the aircraft has fallen off the side of the deck and is already out of parameters for a safe ejection. You can also use it if you fancy flying a convertible on those hot Dubai days. However, there are much more effective methods to deal with a stuffy cockpit. Much better. So I hope this clears up any confusion over the jettison systems available to you on the Hornet. If you have any further questions you're more than welcome to ask them in the comments.